We have two compost bins in the garden and three worm bins in the basement. But for most of our garden waste, our easiest to use compost bin, so to speak, is the garden itself. Today I'll show you how we save time and effort by emulating Mother Nature and returning most of our garden waste directly to the soil. Like most gardeners, my wife and I enjoy strolling around the garden, snacking on peas, carrots, strawberries, and other fresh garden produce. But when we're done with our snack, we don't put the carrot tops or pea pods in the compost pile. We return them directly to the soil. And when we prune plants, the prunings are almost always returned to the soil. For example, I prune our indeterminate tomatoes to a single stem by removing the suckers. And when I do, I just drop the sucker into the garden bed. The only time I wouldn't do that is if the plant material was infected by disease, like blight. It won't take much time at all for the tomato suckers to break down and return their nutrients to the soil. Now let's do some pruning on our grape plants, which generate a whole lot more biomass. We have to prune our grapes to keep them from taking over the walking path, and also to keep them out of the neighbor's yard. And when I'm done pruning, I just toss the material underneath the grape plants. This technique is known as chopping and dropping. It won't take much time at all for these grape leaves to break down. In the meantime, they help cover the soil and retain moisture in the soil, as well as provide food for beneficial soil organisms. I use the same approach with our blackberries. The other day I pruned some of our very tall first year canes. I simply chopped them to the desired height and deposited the plant material underneath the blackberries. Sure is a lot simpler than using traditional composting methods. Next on our chop and drop tour is our Asian pear tree, which I pruned very recently. Just like before, when I prune the tree, I simply drop the prunings on the ground around the tree. These may look unsightly at the moment, but the leaves will break down very quickly and the branches will blend in with the wood chip mulch. In fact, I'll be adding more wood chip mulch soon, so they won't even be noticeable. Next, I'll chop and drop our peonies, which have already flowered so that our bee balm can get more sun and more airflow. As always, I just chop it and drop it right in place. Now our bee balm will get better sun and more airflow, which will make the plants healthier and our bees happier. While I'm over here, I notice that we do have some weeds. We have very few weeds in the garden, when we do have weeds, they're often just trees. And when I find weeds, all I do is pull and drop. The only time I wouldn't pull and drop a weed is if it had already gone to seed or if it was so invasive that it might take hold even without seeds. In which case, I'd either hot compost it or remove it from the garden entirely, depending on the weed. Hey, Oscar, what's up, bud? I also hot compost or remove plant cuttings that are diseased or infested with pests rather than drop them in the garden. And I don't drop rotten fruit on the ground because it can attract flies, mice, and rats. It gets buried in the compost bin instead. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how you can use chop and drop in your garden. It's definitely the easiest way to compost garden waste. By emulating nature and returning garden waste directly to the soil, you save a lot of time and effort. You don't have to haul everything to the compost bin turn it over and over, and then return it as finished compost to the garden. Instead, organic matter and nutrients are returned directly to the soil. You keep the soil covered, and beneficial soil organisms are fed right there in the area where the plants are growing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. Well done, Oscar. <laughs>